Keith has been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for the past week and he tested his glucose after three distinct types of exercise. We are going to bring you the results after exercise to failure, high intensity interval training, and steady state exercise. Okay, so you started um, testing with uh, exercise to failure. So explain to everybody what you did for a failure and what the results were. Okay, so what I did was I decided to do one compound exercise to exhaustion at the top of each hour for five hours in the morning. Um, so I, I did uh, pull-ups for back and arms, uh, push-ups for chest, and I did um, um, body squats and wall sits for my legs. Okay, until you could not do any more. Yeah, it, so it would take about, you know, I would do partial rep, I mean, negatives, you know, whatever, till I just couldn't even like get another inch of movement. Okay. So it would take about two minutes. Okay. And then uh, he used the Freestyle Libre uh, reader to test, and you want to just explain, you want to just show how you do that real quick? Sure. Um, yeah, so I have the sensor on the back of my arm. Turn on the reader. You get a reading. 55. Which, which we we can't now we can't we can't get past that right because that is a, obviously a very low blood glucose we're expecting maybe more so in the 80s right would be a little bit more conducive to life yes yeah, yeah. Um, so you have been and and just as an, a side note you have been getting very low readings with your continuous glucose monitor yeah now I've been very strict with my diet and my carb levels have been you know always under 30. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it definitely runs low for me. Yeah, but your ketones have been fairly good for you over the past uh, week. So. Yeah, yeah, my ketones tend to do what you know yeah. I expect them to do. Yeah, so your body is running on ketones and not as reliant on glucose. All right, so what were the results of your blood glucose before and after you did the exercise to exhaustion? So since I was... Uh, um, had the ability to do this like every 15 minutes and keep track of it pretty closely. I just measured my glucose every 15 minutes. Um, I did my ketones at the beginning and at the end. At the beginning, they were 0.3. So four hours later, five hours later, they were at 0.4. So um, that would be a typical thing that I would see with my ketones anyway, just going through that time in the morning. Right, and you are on a fasted state. Right, I was about 12 hours fasted when I started that you know, in the morning that day. Okay. Um, so my glucose numbers, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm recording every 50 minutes. So I got this list of glucose numbers. So I went, uh, there was only about a, from low to high, about a 20 point difference. And the low and the high didn't really occur, you know, with any kind of a pattern. It was yeah. just kind of like this throughout that whole period of time that I was testing. Okay. So not really overly can conclusive, but just these short bursts of exercise on a, in a fasted state did not really not seem to spike your glucose or anything yeah. like that. No, it didn't seem to have an, uh, like a metabolic effect, you know, yeah. at all. So let's go on to the second type of exercise you tried, which was HIT or high intensity interval training. Right. And what did you do for that? So I utilize playing hockey as interval training. If, um, uh, if you're not familiar with, with playing hockey, Typically, it's, it's a couple minutes of really hard skating, and then you have to jump over the boards and somebody else goes on for you, and you get a minute or two rest before you go back out again. You repeat this thing for about 45 minutes, we play, and it's exhausting. I mean, we, we were done. Now, I did that day, um, I was about nine hours fasted because I play hockey in the evening, so late in the morning that day, I had a couple of hard-boiled eggs. Okay. And I had a little cream in my coffee earlier, too. Okay. Um, like, almost zero carbs okay. the rest of that day okay. going into that hockey game. Um, and I didn't test my ketones just because it just wasn't conducive to sitting there and doing stuff in the locker room with everybody around. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just checked my, my blood glucose. All right, and what were the results? The results were actually pretty surprising to me. I started at a blood glucose level of 65, and then after the game, right after the game, I was at 93, so almost a 30-point jump. Up. Up. Right, so exercising intensely, as you did, 
actually caused a very high rise in your blood glucose. Right. And in fact, the highest glucose reading that you have gotten since you've had the continuous monitor on. That is the highest glucose reading I've had. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and, and we've seen this before, uh, this kind of phenomenon that uh, your glucose can go up after very intense exercise. One of the reasons is, could be that this is perceived as a stress to your body. So the cortisol uh, response is causing glucose to go higher. Right. Um, We've seen other folks in our space, you know, talk about, you know, uh, doing like really high intensity training at the gym or whatever, and they, their ketones actually go down, their glucose goes up a little bit. So it, in, in that respect, it, it wasn't really surprising. Right. So let's get away from intense exercise and let's look at steady state exercise, which could be anything from walking to riding bike to um, uh, jogging. But in your case, you mowed the grass. Cutting the grass seems to be the thing that uh, um, gives me one of the higher in intensity readings on my aura ring. And I think it's just because my heart rate is elevated and it just stays elevated for the whole time I'm out there. Now, I'm not huffing and puffing, um, but I'm definitely pushing a lawnmower for an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, um, so that's what I utilize to kind of take a look at things. Mm -hmm. So what happened with that was that my, my glucose um, started low and went even lower. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my ketones um, in that, for that hour and 15 minute period of time I started at about 0.4, which for that time of day was about normal for me. Mm -hmm. After that hour and 15 minutes, I was up to 1.3, mm -hmm. which, yeah. you know, for, for me, getting my ketones up seems to be um, quite a feat. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, so doing that steady state, uh, actually, I mean, if we're going to, to compare the three types, that gave you the most favorable outcome as far as glucose and ketones afterwards. Right. So, I mean, my assumption is that means that I was burning more fat for fuel. Uh, and, you know, they've said that for a long time, right? Slow, steady state cardio mm -hmm. uh, allows you in this kind of aerobic kind of conditioning where you still can talk. You're not passing that threshold mm -hmm. to anaerobic. Um, seems to be very good at burning fat. Now, I, you know, it, I just hate that yeah. because being on a treadmill for 45 minutes or an hour just sounds incredibly boring. Um, but for me, it may be the best fat burning exercise that I have. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not always typical. If anything, you're very atypical. Um, so if you, if this is something that you are want to play with to kind of take your diet and, and weight loss to the next level, you know, these are available. Uh, now you do have to get a prescription from your doctor, but I think a lot of doctors nowadays would be would be open to uh, uh, getting that prescription for you. So. There's certainly no harm to it. So yeah, all right. So uh, hopefully that uh, gives you some insights into exercise and how it affects your blood glucose. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, please subscribe. We will be back soon with another video. Thanks. <laughs>